Welcome back everyone, Patrick here. Moving on to another question dealing with expanding and simplifying polynomials. So what we gotta do is expand and simplify each of these over here. And notice that this is a special case here because notice that the brackets, they're the same. The only thing that's different is the sign in between each of the binomials. And we've gone over a couple of these special products before within other videos, but this here, this kind of situation, what it's called is a difference of squares. So in the video before, we went over squaring binomials to get that perfect square trinomial. That's when you have a binomial and then you're just squaring it or multiplying that binomial by itself. Here, this is called a difference of squares. And the reason why is because let's say just in general, you got a minus b, a plus b, right? Where this a and this b, it could be anything, could be numbers, could be variables, could be a mix of numbers and variables. So this is like a minus b, a plus b. What would happen in general if you expand this? Well, you'll have a times a, which is a squared, a times b, which is a b. Then you'll have negative b times a, putting those in alphabetical order, you'll have minus a b, and then you'll have negative b times positive b, which would give you minus b squared. And then notice that these are like terms and they cancel out. So there's actually no middle term there. And you end up with this over here. And that term difference of squares comes from this result over here, right? Because you have a difference here of squares, of numbers or um, expressions that are squared. And so you may see, let me just rewrite this with all this, without all this work, you may see a formula in your textbook given like that. And then you may be required to apply that formula to these kinds of products. So I'm gonna do it two different ways, both of these, like we did the squaring binomials. I'm gonna show you manually how to do it, and then I'm gonna show you how you can apply this formula over here. So let's start off with the first one. We got x plus two times x minus two. So if we do it manually, x times x is x squared. x times negative two is negative two x, positive two x, negative four. Right there, those cancel out. So we'd end up with x squared minus four. So that's what the final solution would be for this one. Now, if we take this and apply it here, notice it's in a different order, but it doesn't matter because you're multiplying. So notice it's a plus b times a minus b. So in this case, the a is like the x term, right? That first term in the binomial. So in this case, the a is like the x, and then the b is like this two over here that's getting added and subtracted getting added and subtracted, so the b is two. So if we take both of these values for a and b, the x and the two respectively, and we plug it into this formula, we'd end up with x, the a value to the power of two, minus the b value, which is two to the power of two, which would give us x squared minus four, which is, notice the exact same thing. We got it when we did it manually multiplying everything out, right? So that's how you can apply this formula. The problem is you gotta start memorizing a couple more formulas. Again, personally, I'd rather just do things manually and memorize a little bit less. I like to have that space for flexibility. And once you start seeing these, enough of these, you're just gonna recognize them right away. You're gonna realize that when you get something like this, you actually don't have to fully expand it. You could just take the X's, multiply them, the twos, Multiply and make sure there's a negative in between. There's like positive two times negative two. And that negative positive is gonna make that middle term or that bx value in the uh, standard form quadratic ax squared plus bx plus c, that bx value is gonna disappear. All right, so let's do the rest of these. So doing this one, manually, you would have x times x, which is x squared, x times negative 3y, which is negative 3xy, positive 3y times positive x would give us positive 3yx if you put it in 
alphabetical order, x, y, and then positive 3y times negative 3y, 3 times negative 3 would give us minus 9, and then y times y would give you y squared like that. Notice those cancel out. So you end up with that product right there. If we apply to the formula, notice the a value is x, and then the b value is 3y. So taking these terms, plugging it in for the a and the b in the formula, you'll have x squared minus 3y squared. You gotta take that entire b value and square it. This would just be x squared, this here, because you're multiplying two things, and then the exponent on the outside, you take both of those things to that exponent. So you'd end up with x squared minus nine y squared like that. So notice you get the exact same thing as we got over here. Moving on to the next one, we got five minus x, five plus x. Notice this one's a little bit different because here the variable is on the right side of the binomial versus here the variable was on the left side. Same process though, so you do five times five, which is 25, five times positive x, which gives us five x, negative x times five gives us minus five x, and then negative x times positive x would give you minus x squared like that. These here cancel out, you end up with 25 minus x squared for part c. What if we apply to the formula? Notice in this case, let me give myself some room here. So notice in this case, the, um, the a value is five, and then the, x, or the b value is x, right? Those x values right there. Plugging it into the formula, you'd end up with five squared minus x squared, which gives you 25 minus x squared. Same thing that we got. And then finally, part D over here would be same process. Let's do it down here, start it down here at least. 8m times 8m would give us 64m squared. 8m times positive 7n uh, would give us positive 56mn. Minus 7n times 8m would give us minus 56mn. And then negative 7n times positive 7n would give us minus 49n squared. Those cancel out, so we're left with 64n squared minus 49n squared. That difference of squares right there. And then if we take this, plug it into the formula, notice in this case the a value is 8m, and then the b value is 7n. So then taking those respective values for the a and the b, plugging it in here, we'd end up with 8m squared minus 7n squared like that. This would be, sorry, um, 8 goes to the power 2, m goes to the power 2, 7 goes to the power 2, n goes to the power 2. So we'd end up with a 64m squared minus 49 squared like that. Same thing that we got when we did it manually. Right, so be on the lookout for these kinds of expressions, their difference of squares, and your final results for multiplying these kinds of binomials by each other, where they're the same but the sign is different in between them, should be these kinds of quadratics that are just ax squared and it's actually not always going to be quadratics because you could have multiple variables. Basically, the product, the final product that you're going to get is going to be in this kind of format where you're just basically multiplying the ends and then there's a negative in between.